So we are back here on the Choose 954 podcast, episode 48, with Vanessa Seltzer of the Gilda's Club, where we're currently sitting in right now. If you didn't know about Choose 954, we started a social movement to cultivate culture and community here in Broward County in an effort to keep people to know with all the great things that are going on and make this a better place to live and not just a better place to vacation. The point of the podcast is to connect you with amazing people like her that do incredible things in the community. Now, this podcast is brought to you by the Thousand Mermaids Artificial Reef Project, creating artistically crafted artificial reef modules to help save the natural reefs, create ecotourism, research opportunities, save the fishes, save the ocean, save the planet. To find out more, you can log on to www.1000mermaids.com. That's www.1000mermaids.com. So without much further ado, for those that don't know you from all of the different things that you do, <laughs> uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about you at a high level? Okay, well, my name is Vanessa Seltzer. I work for Gilda's Club South Florida. I am their development director, so I've been here now going on four years. Um, I have been a part of the nonprofit sector here in Broward County for, say now, going on about 10, 11 years. I've been specifically in development for seven. So I've worked with foster care, worked with the Y, uh, Muscular Dystrophy Association, and now Gilda's Club. Uh, outside of this nonprofit, I do like to volunteer my time. Um, so we laugh because I tend to not be able to say no. Don't come find me though, please. I'm at my capacity. Uh, so I do a lot with the Fort Lauderdale Chamber. I am the secretary for the Women's Council Board. I am also the incoming chair for the West Broward Business Council, all under the chamber. I'm also on the board for the Association of Fundraising Professionals. Mm -hmm. And I like to volunteer my knowledge of fundraising and my passion to help the community to uh, the Backpack Barber Foundation, which you are also on. Um, helping the homeless, one haircut and conversation at a time, mm -hmm. and the Elite Foundation, who helps survivors of human trade and sex trafficking here in South Florida. Amen. Yeah. And you're, uh, within your own regard, a phenomenal community builder, and you're mm -hmm. helping develop a phenomenal community here at Gilda's Club, yes. a sense of community. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Gilda's Club? So, Gilda's Club is a cancer support community. So. We were founded after our namesake, Gilda Radner, from the original cast of SNL. She drew her own cancer journey when she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, realized that although she's surrounded by the greatest family and friends, no one really got what she was going through. So she went to a place in California called the Wellness Center, and they got it. They welcomed this sense of community around anyone impacted by cancer. So she wanted a place like that for everyone, all across the nation. And when she passed away, unfortunately, um, her husband, Gene Wilder, and their friends opened the original Gilda's Club in New York. Then shortly thereafter, through some of our founders, we were the second to open nationally. Um, so we are a national organization. Uh, we also partnered with another organization, who is our sister organization called Cancer Support Community. So they actually oversee our headquarters now, um, and together we have over 100 locations throughout the nation uh, doing great work, multiple in New York and some other larger cities. Here in South Florida, we are the only one. Uh, there was a cancer support community in Miami, but due to lack of funding, they unfortunately had to close. So our main mission is to provide a safe, a warm, a welcoming place for anyone impacted by cancer. So that's the person diagnosed, their family, their friends, their caregiver, anyone that's going through this, they can come through our big red door and receive services absolutely free to them in a place that feels like home because we're literally in a home. And um, where is this home located? So we are in a historical home. Uh, we are at the corner of Davy and Andrews and it's 119 Rose Drive. Uh, we So our service model is really to build that community and empowerment and sustainment 
around the person. So we do that through several models. Uh, right now we're sitting in one of our support group rooms. So our support groups are different, although led by um, licensed professionals, we're not the experts. Our members are the experts of their journey and of what's going on around them. So they lead the conversation. They make sure that everyone else is doing well. They'll check on each other outside of the group. And that's really our main goal in everything that we do is that we're just kind of that vessel to support the community and not so much the individual. Uh, so we're in our survivors group room. So this is for people that are newly diagnosed um, and beyond remission. And really it's, they're here for each other. They can talk about whatever's going on in life and feel like they really get what I'm going through because they're going through it too. Uh, so we have support groups for the caregivers, for the kids. We have a gay men's networking group, a men's group, a bereavement group. Uh, we have about, it changes constantly. We're constantly growing. So when I first started here, we had eight support groups. Now, I think we're verging on 19. Uh, we had 75% growth just in our support group. So I would challenge anyone who's ever thought about it, um, being a part of a support group, but felt like maybe it's not for them, just come, come to a new member orientation. Becoming a member is absolutely free and just sit in on a session and see how this community really vibes together. They become each other's tribe and it's really, an honor to be able to watch it grow and flourish. But outside of the support groups, we do healthy living classes. So we like to empower our members to really focus on mind, body, and spirit outside of empowering them in knowledge on their treatments and other variations of treatment. So we do everything from uh, yoga, tai chi, to watercolors class. Uh, we have a book club, a writing club, kind of everything that could cover any of your interests or passions. And of course we have an improv class mm -hmm. that is on Fridays led by an amazing woman named Aniela. Um, and that becomes its own kind of group and support. You know, We have members that have never attended a support group. But they've always gone to yoga or they've always gone to the book club or writing club and that becomes their family that becomes their community outside of that we hold educational events so we have partnered with all the major hospitals in the area we're lucky to have over 20 year relationships with memorial broward health um, and now really growing relationships with baptist and miami cancer institute as well as UM sylvester oh, nice. um, cleveland clinic and holy cross so we've been very lucky with our community partners in that sector. And what they do is they provide their specialists, their top oncologists, and they come and speak to our members about every kind of subject. So everything from palliative care, hematology, the latest and greatest in clinical trials and treatments to the power of laughter, the power of your mind through pain management. Mm -hmm. um, Clean eating, we're very much about healthy living, so we'll have, we have a chef who volunteers their time, we have nutritionists who volunteer their time to educate on eating healthy. Um, a lot of mindfulness, so we do a six week uh, mind body challenge, which is always fun for our members. And we do it in an intimate setting. So again, we want that person to feel comfortable. And so they'll have this doctor speak but they're also given this time to have a Q&A that's not in a large auditorium or in what is a cold, stuffy room, but it's in a warm, welcoming space. Uh, the people around them are familiar faces, and a lot of our members are very well-versed in their treatment and able to ask very poignant questions, and they're able to grow and kind of empower themselves through their journey. Uh, and then we also have social events because what would we be named after Bill the Rider and not have a good time? So we have everything from holiday potlucks to we have a Gilda's Got Talent. So that was a very fun night. Mm -hmm. It was really cool to see a lot of our members um, come together. Specifically, one um, 
my program director touched on it today. So uh, through his cancer, he lost a lot of, I guess, use of his voice. So it was hard for him to talk at some points and hard for him to really sing. So when we announced that we were going to do this talent show, he'd been practicing for a really long time and was able to have a very special moment and being able to serenade his wife at the talent show. And it was just such a great moment and you could just see how proud he felt. And for us, it's that's the moment. It's like, that's how we do it. That's how we do what we do. And then at the very end, uh, the members came together and they actually sang Bohemian Rhapsody, which if you know is a very long song. So if you don't have the vocal cords for it or the wherewithal, and they were all able to make it through. And it was just such a, I unfortunately couldn't be there, but I'm now, you know, having FOMO, which I could have been there and I'll be at the next one. But we have really, those are the kind of events that we have where we come together as a family and as a community and just have a really good time and leave the cancer at the door and remember that there is life beyond this. Um, but we'll support you if, unfortunately, that life has gone short, shorter than we expected. Yeah. And, um, and it provides valuable service. I think, unfortunately, we all know someone either six degrees mm -hmm. of separation that's been affected by cancer. And, you know, not everybody knows that these resources, not only that they're available, yeah. but they're available for free. Exactly. In the community. Um, how are you guys able to make those services available for free? So, I mean, that's a great point. All of us have been impacted by cancer in some way, right? So one in two men and one in three women will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. It's a reality here. Um, there's science behind it. It's happening. So for us, it's really kind of just like our membership in our clubhouse. It's the community that drives us and helps us to continue. Uh, we have corporate donors that will help us keep the lights on. Um, we're very big on food. Again, very big family. So we like to eat. If there's food, we know people are coming. Mm -hmm. um, so we provide food at all of our events, um, or at least most. Uh, you know, Wednesday nights are our biggest support group night. So we have about four to five support groups that are happening at the same time. So it's a really beautiful time to come because at 5.30, the house is full, full of people and they're all having dinner together. Like one big family style of dinner. And then everybody goes into their specific support group and you know the family kind of hones in and supports their own. And so we have corporate sponsors that will cover the cost of uh, those dinners, one being a, a Dignity Memorial. Okay. Uh, so they are huge supporters of ours and uh, covered dinners for one week each quarter. So that's an opportunity. Uh, we also have our you know grants and family foundations, endowments. We have major donors, amazing board members who are all individual major donors of ours. Uh, our community donors. So those are people that are like, look, I don't have a lot, but this is what I'm willing to give. And you'd be amazed at how much that adds up to. We also invite people to do third party uh, events. So those are people that go out and do, you know, like a barbecue or family dinner. We have people that do car washes, um, in office, kind of, you know, casual Fridays, pay five bucks and you can wear jeans. And they take the proceeds and donate it to us. Really? Uh, yeah, and we have some long standing, uh, Oakland Park Benevolent is a long standing uh, big dog station. If you've ever been to that establishment in Oakland Park, they do an event for us every year. Uh, you know, Salon Nirvana, Unleash Life, a lot of them just give back in a way that really helps them as well because they get to impact us in a real way. And we're thankful for that. So we always invite people to come to us and do things like that. Um, Broward Health Credit Union as well. They're long, long standing third party donors and we're just always so grateful for them. Um, but also we have our events. So Gilda's Club events, nice segue. Uh, so we have four events, actually five events every year. Um, and we like to do them differently. We really like to be different from everyone else. And I know every nonprofit says that, 
but out of the eight or eight or nine nonprofits that I've worked for, they they really do take that and drive it home. Uh, so our first is Over the Edge, which will be on October 5th. That's the one that people probably see the most on social media. They're seeing it a lot right yeah. now. Um, there's still a lot of space to be able to be involved, so please be involved because again, 100% of those proceeds come back to us. So if you look at the automation building in downtown Fort Lauderdale, you've ever looked at it and said, I would really like to scale down that building. You now have the opportunity. Uh, so Over the Edge is an opportunity for people to raise funds and awareness uh, and then get to repel down the automation to support the Elvis Club. So on October 4th, we're going to have our media day where about seven um, local influencers and personalities, even Stanley, Stanley C. Panther, in full gear is going to repel down the building. Wow. Yes. So uh, they're going to go down um, just to kind of kick off the event. And then on Saturday, October 5th, we are going to have over 50 individuals repel down the side of the building. Uh, and they've all been impacted by cancer in some way. And a lot of them are teams. I have a team in case you want to donate. It is the Fort Lauderdale Super Women and Man. So we have one guy on our team. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to raise, our goal is um, about $4,000. And then we're gonna repel down the side of the building on that Saturday. I'm actually gonna raffle off my spot. I did it last year. It is a lot of fun. Over the Edge is a national organization, actually international. So they do this day in and day out. They're professionals at what they do. It's super, super safe. It sounds insane, right. but once you like actually lean back over that edge you realize how secure you're in that gear and it goes by really quickly like you don't just drop down you gradually enjoy the view of las olas uh, and then we're gonna have a full kind of block party at the bottom um, circle house coffee mojo donuts la mexicana veil food company they're all going to be providing food um, Liros Massage is going to be giving chair massages to the repellers. So we have some really great vendors. There's going to be more vendors than that um, that are really just going to be there. There's going to be music. And so if you want to watch these crazy people go down this building, come out. Uh, we're going to be there probably about 8 a.m. to about 2 p.m., maybe a little bit later if we get some more people. But it's never too late to sign up. Uh, you can go to Gilda's Club, SouthFlorida.org, hit our events page, you'll see the registration, and you're more than welcome to become a repeller. You also have 30 days past the event to raise the $1,000 in case you don't hit the mark, but we'll help you. And I mean, I so many people have been surprised as to how quickly they were able to raise their funds. Um, every, and a thousand sounds like a lot, but really, if your community comes together and everybody just gives twenty dollars or twenty five dollars, you can really make up that money very quickly. Uh, Amen. Yeah, and so for me, you know, full transparency. When I first started at Gilda's Club, I actually it was kind of that six degrees of separation on how I was impacted by cancer. It was an old coworker of mine. We were hired at the same time. I saw her at the top of her health. I saw her go through her cancer journey. Uh, as a woman, I saw her lost her hair. Um, I saw her embrace it. And then I saw her in remission. And now, thankfully, fully back to health. And she really, really inspired me in venturing into this world. Um, but to show the power of cancer, um, I have now been impacted twice. So my father at 89 years old was diagnosed with skin cancer. Thankfully it was a very uh, small case. So he was able to just get very minor radiation and be able to take care of it. But he's one of those cases where he thought if he wore a hat, he was good. That's not, they don't have UV protection. Um, so guys, your hair and your hats are not gonna protect you. So keep that in mind. Um, and unfortunately, a friend of mine from high school, she was kind of that person in my freshman year of high school, if anybody remembers her freshman year of high school, how brutal it really was. 
Um, she was kind of that light in a very dark, dark time for me. And although we sort of separated ways, uh, she always stayed with me and it was kind of one of those friends that every few years we'd find each other on Facebook and talk or talk on the phone. I want to say it was Hurricane Maria when the Zello app, the two-way radio app was really big. Mm -hmm. We talked like an hour over that. Uh, unfortunately, she passed this spring to breast cancer at 36 years old. So that was the hardest hit. Um, you know, I spoke to her a couple of months before she passed and now I see a lot of her and a lot of our members. So now more than ever, I am dedicated to this mission uh, because it really will affect you in some way. And we've all seen the power of mental health and what it can really do to someone and help someone. And so I implore anyone who knows someone impacted by cancer or is impacted by cancer, come to Gilda's, just get to know us, just come to our website. We're really a warm and welcoming place. And the worst thing that I could possibly hear in my job and in any of our job here is I wish I knew. Uh, it always kind of eats me up inside because we're here. We're always open, we're here for you, but we need the help getting the word out. So that is partly why I do so much out in the community other than I love Broward and I love my community. Um, it's so people know who we are and know that our doors are always open. Yeah, it's free, there's no catch. You don't nope. have, uh, you don't have like numbers you have to hit. No. Nope. We want to help as many people as, as you can help. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I just did a tour and it's uh, absolutely beautiful. Yeah house facility um you know and you'll notice the peacocks i am so happy that they're not interrupting because yeah. this is like their hangout spot well, and then you'd have to explain a lot of things about the background yeah. um but yeah i mean it's a really just special place and like i said we have outreach also so you don't have to come to downtown fort lauderdale to get our services we have a guild is on the go so that is our support group model that's outside of the house Great. Um, everybody knows if you live in East Broward, you're probably not going west and vice versa, and north and south. So we have groups at Holy Cross off of Commercial and US-1. We have a Deerfield group at UM Sylvester. We have a Western group, a Davie group. Uh, there's one more if you go to our website, sorry. We have so much happening that sometimes it's a little hard to keep up with. Uh, but we also have community outreach with our women of color and our women partnering with women. So this is for the non-insured and underinsured to educate them on getting their annuals um, and really giving them the resources to be able to go get them. Um, especially if you don't have insurance or your insurance won't cover it, it can be costly. Right. Or if you're going into it with a fear of being judged because of um, your background or sexual orientation, we connect you with those resources where you can again feel safe going into a setting and you can just focus on yourself and focus on your health. Um, so Over the Edge and our other events fund that. Some of our other events, because it kind of went off on a tangent on that one. Uh, it's a big one. It's a big one though. Uh, so we also have a jet cruise on Rouge. That is, this is our second annual, hmm. but I, I coin it, it's a drinking and eating around the world in an airport hangar. So uh, we are blessed to have a board chair, Leonard Goldberg, who owns Gold Aviation. He, look him up, they're doing amazing work in the Bahamas right now. Uh, but he opens up his hangar to us when it's cooler out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Six Star and Eden Catering um, and our amazing committee come together and they recreate our first year we recreated these countries so you were walking into italy you were walking to china you were walking into france and eating this amazing food while also having an amazing drink great music amazing auction items no program just a good time just a fun night uh, one of our raffle prizes was actually a private jet ride so if you won you got into the private jet midway through the party flew to South Beach and back, and then enjoy the rest of the night.
Oh wow. Yeah, so it is February twerk. 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 It is February 21st, 2020. It's going to be a gold deviation, but we're doing a carnival theme this year. So it's going to be a lot of South American street, we're going to South American street cart food and just really good stuff happening. A lot of great surprises. Um, Memorial Healthcare System is our title sponsor for that night. Uh, with our host, Gold Aviation, we have some other amazing sponsors. Uh, and Over the Edge, our title sponsor, I want to give a shout out to Broward Health. They are our title sponsor. Um, and then we have our True Blue event, our Live from South Florida is Saturday Night Live. So it is a true comedy night uh, where we'll enjoy, you know, great food, drinks again. Again, everything we do is like you're going to your family's house. Great food. Laughs. Laughs. Uh, we have a comedian every year. We um, haven't announced the comedian yet, so follow us on social media, follow our website. We'll be announcing that. Um, we also have two, one event that has been with us for a long time that not a lot of people know, and one brand new event. So we do a day of research and hope. Important. This very important day. So this is a free conference. It's a one day conference, half day, where the person diagnosed, their caregiver can come out and learn the latest and greatest that's happening in clinical trials here in South Florida. So what all of these major hospitals are doing that are innovative and really, really helping improve people's lives and improving their treatments as well. And also including some mind body, you know, the power of the mind and things like that. But it's also an opportunity for any nurses, social workers, or mental health staff who are looking for continued education credits. You can come and get three and a half free CEUs at Day of Research and Hope, hosted by Nova Southeastern University. It is at their university. Um, Memorial Healthcare is also our title sponsor for that. Um, again, absolutely free. We have vendor opportunities there. So typically we'll have um, everything from a masseuse and an acupuncturist. Walgreens will be there talking about, they have a lot of amazing programs as well for those that are going through cancer that are free to them. Uh, but we also have pharmaceutical companies where you can actually talk about how maybe you can't afford your, your medications. Guess what? They have grants. They right. have ways to help you pay for that. Right. Um, so there, you have people right in front of you. Uh, we're inviting health insurance companies. Uh, we want to be able to be that bridge because we don't refer any doctor or any company to our members, but we are that connector to, so that way they can make the decision for themselves and be empowered in a setting that feels safe to them. Um, so that's a really great day. And then we have a golf tournament now. So we had a great host last year and sponsor in um, Shark Construction and Bonnie Weaver uh, with Holistic Performance. So they came together and said, we're gonna do this for Gilda's Club. And they put together in a very short amount of time, a great golf tournament. So this year we're doing it as a Gilda's Club event and that is going to be uh, May 4th, 2020 in Emerald Hills. Save the day. Day of the date and research and hope is April 18th. So, and we'll link this yeah. in the comments on uh, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, if they want to see a full schedule, where can they find you on the interwebs? So, everything is at um, Gilda's Club South Florida.org. So, it's Gilda, Gilda's Club South Florida spelled out.org, which is how it's written there. Uh, follow us on Facebook though, same thing, Gilda's Club South Florida. Um, our amazing marketing and um, special events director has done some great work on our social media and she can keep you up to date on absolutely everything, including some services that come from our national organization. So there is, um, for those of you who said, man, I wish there was a Gilda's Club where my mom lives or where my dad lives, and there may not be, or there may not be a cancer support community, 
there is a cancer hotline. And if you go to our Facebook page, you will see that hotline. And so they're open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And they provide support via webcast or phone. And it can be either one person. I do think my lifeline, which is another service, is creating a virtual support group system. So there is always support. Just let us know how we can be that for you. Amazing. And it is a, an element of community that, as we alluded to, not everybody's privy to or, mm -hmm. you know, but it it is available. It is free. Yeah. There's no catch. You don't have to. Absolutely nothing. All you have to do is call our office. Um, the wonderful Yvonne is going to pick up the phone and you just schedule a meeting. So you come in, you're going to meet our uh the angels of the organization, which is our program staff. So we're a staff of eight that do all of this. And that's a staff of three that do all the programming that I talked about. And I haven't even really covered all of it. Yeah. Um, and they do it with a passion. So they'll walk you through what it is to be a member, the resources that we can connect you to, again, absolutely free. And then you can receive any of our services. Um, again, whether you are the person diagnosed or it's your family, your friend, uh, you're the caregiver, come in. Uh, we also have children's services. Uh, so we do have Moody Land, which you took a tour of. It's in a basement. There's a whole story behind that. Um, so this is a support group specifically for children diagnosed as well as siblings of children diagnosed or children of someone diagnosed. Again, led by um, licensed professionals, the conversation is crafted for that age group and it really surrounds, you know, gratitude journals with our teens or arts and crafts projects with our kids. And for some of our kids that are diagnosed, this is the only time they have to socialize. So, you know, we had one family where it was a five-year-old girl diagnosed. Um, she's good, she's fine now, uh, but this was, she, she wasn't able to go to public school. So this was the time that she was able to socialize. So she'd be waiting at the door at five o'clock to get to Gilda's Club. And, you know, we've had kids kind of grow up in the clubhouse and on Wednesday nights, you know, that whole tribe, but they were all their kids. And so it was really, it's a really cool thing to see. We also have um, our family fun series where we have just a fun day together, whether it's field day or movie night, game night, and the, ki the families get to just have fun together and not think about a diagnosis, not think about treatment, and just be a family together and reconnect. Uh, and then we have our special events for our kids. The next one coming up is Noogie Fest. If you know Gilda, she had a character that did a lot of Noogie, so we have a lot of Noogie stuff. Um, so that is going to be our Halloween event. So nice. it's going to be a really, really fun night. This is actually my first that I'm able to attend. My first I hadn't started here yet. The second I was pregnant. The third my then four month old, or no, I was on maternity leave. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, the math all didn't work out in my favor. So I finally get to be here. Um, and then we have a kids can program, which is a, a preventative program in our Broward school system to educate kids on wearing sunscreen, don't smoke, don't vape, eat healthy. Oh. And so we have an oncology nurse that talks about the medical side of it. And then one of our, one of our staff talks about the social cycle, psychosocial side of it. So we do a lot and we do a lot with the mission of just building that community around someone to empower and educate and sustain them through their cancer journey and then celebrate every time. So. We're always here for a good laugh, a good time, and a good hug. We're big huggers here. So I ask you to, if you want to support Gilda's Club, you can do it through three ways. Through your time, volunteering. Um, so all of our special events, we need volunteers. Um, in the clubhouse, we need volunteers. Um, through your talent. So we are in need of those PR professionals, of those IT professionals. Um, anyone that just wants to lend their talent to us, their knowledge to us, whether it be on one of our event committees or even on our board, and obviously of your treasure. If you're willing to donate 
and help us. 100% uh, of the proceeds stay local. Although we have a headquarters office, we are kind of our own entity. So 100% of your donation stays in South Florida, supporting those going through cancer here in Broward County. Uh, and just thank you ahead of time. And thank you for taking the time to come to our clubhouse. My pleasure. It's, it's, it is quite moving. And, um, uh, you know, people always ask me, like, you know, what's something to get involved in? And mm -hmm. you generally want to get involved with something that relates to you. And, you know, yeah. there's so many different things. But this is a noteworthy cause. And also a lot of times people want to get involved in something that they can see, touch, and feel. Yes. Uh, maybe people will donate to a foundation that does research. And the research is certainly important, but there's no real tangible exactly. uh, ROI on that. So this is something I strongly encourage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all know somebody that's you know, fortunately been affected by cancer. Um, so I would encourage you to go over the edge, yes, go to one of these events, please. we'll link them in the comments so you can find out more. Um, and uh, we really do appreciate you mm -hmm. taking the time. Thank you. Um, one thing that you guys participated in, an upcoming event that we have for a nonprofit that I'm involved in as the executive director amongst other things, is um, we have a shop and share coming up at Lily Pulitzer. Yes, Lily is amazing. Lily Pulitzer, Las Olas. And They're amazing they told me that they actually don't have enough nonprofits to participate yes. in this program. So what they do is they'll take a day that you choose that works for their schedule mm -hmm. and uh, they'll donate a portion. Not only will they donate a portion of sales for the day, and it's not an inexpensive store. Um, <laughs> they actually provide uh, champagne and light bites. They market mm -hmm. it. They make a flyer. Um, we did a press release. I did a podcast with them the previous episode. If you look it up, episode 47. Um, so with the Thousand Mermaids Artificial Reef Project, uh, I'll be out there. Uh, the founders of the project will be out there. To answer any questions, you can meet them. We'll have one of our mermaid selfie tales. Um, and they actually have, yeah, it is cool. It's a good, a nice photo op. And they actually have a mermaid print line. That's actually oh, sparked this. That's that's where we I made like the connection. When those things come around. We like went in there and you know we're, whatever, and uh, we're just across the street because we have the zero empty space there, and mm -hmm. and asked if they had any mermaid that we saw, and, and that's what led to another. So October fifth, uh, which is a Sunday, they let us reschedule due to the hurricane. It says Sunday, October fifth, twelve to six. Stop by, have some mm -hmm. champagne, check out what they have and it would support this very, very important cause to help save the reefs. Um, if you want to be a part of community and you want to get some inspiration, maybe to, you know, start something new in your life or meet other like-minded individuals or other creative individuals, we encourage you to join Creative Zen, which is our monthly breakfast lecture series. It's a mini TED talk that we host for free every second Friday morning of the month. Uh, the doors open at 8.30, the talk starts at 9, you're either by 10. There's free coffee and breakfast bites provided by our sponsor, Cow Bakery and Cafe on uh, Federal Highway. They open a new location nice. in Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. And um, we bring in a thought-provoking speaker, uh, a startup founder, an entrepreneur, an artist, creative, mm -hmm. so many different people, doctors. Um, this month, we're very excited to have a pretty noteworthy um, spoken word poet, nonprofit leader in our community, Darius Daughtry of the Art Prevails Project, um, who works with kids, adults, and helps them um, explore their creative outlet through spoken word, performance art, many different art uh, out outlets and platforms. He was a former teacher, uh, brilliant poet. Um, so that will be the second Friday morning of the month, which I believe is October 12th at Yellow Creative Arts and Events Center, which is a dance studio with so much more absolutely beautiful space mm -hmm. in Uptown Fort Lauderdale off of Commercial, East of 95, West of Bayview. You can find out more if you type in Creative Zen. Um, you can find it on the Choose 954 Facebook event calendar. And, um, and then there's... Uh, there's a few others, so... That we're both involved in. Yeah, the, and some of the other nonprofits are gonna kill me if I don't mention things. Okay, so let's go down it. Uh, September 30th. So, yes. so October 1st is National Haircut Day. Haircut Day. So the Backpack Barber Foundation will be out um, 
at the Broward Partnership for the Homeless North site in Pompano. Um, they're going to be giving out free haircuts. We are asking if you are a hairstylist, so you cut and style hair for women, if you would please come out and volunteer. Uh, you can go to the Backpack Barber Foundation uh, Facebook page or website, reach out to us. We are looking, you can give an hour or two of your time. We do have some women who are part of the Broward Partnership for Homeless who we also want to serve. Um, I do believe we are looking for a few more volunteers. We're looking for people to donate water, donate stuff for the toiletry bag. So uh, it's going to be a really great day. Uh, if you look on either Evan's page um, or the Backpack Barber Foundation's page, if you're friends with me, it's on my page. The flyer has all of the information. Um, on September 24th, the Women's Council will be having an event at the Sanctuary, uh, which is right off of Andrews. Um, just, it's right off of Andrews. You'll have to look that up on the Chamber website. But the proceeds are going back to Gilda's Club. There's going to be a lot of uh, different vendors there. And on October 17th, the Elite Foundation is going to have their unstoppable event. There's going to be amazing speakers talking. Um, just it's going to be a really motivational night. Tickets are on sale there. Uh, and just really, if you want to get more involved in the community uh, as through your nonprofit and you're looking to better yourself in fundraising, the Association of Fundraising Professionals is here for you. We are the local chapter and we have an event coming up also on September 24th in the morning on how to build a successful board. Um, so check us out there. Um, I'll be there. <laughs> and uh, if you didn't know about the Backpack Barber Foundation, um, our dear friend Greg Young, who's one of the owners of the Women's Greg Cut Barber. Shirt in, uh, mm -hmm. in Fat Village, in Flywood Village, he, uh, very open and candidly um, after having become a successful barber and business owner and member of the community uh, decided he wants to get back having overcome his own struggles with alcoholism homelessness at, at a point in his life that he was able to um, you know better himself so now he likes to give back by providing complimentary not only haircuts to those in need um, a conversation to boost their morale, help point them in the right direction if they want the help. Mm -hmm. um, he also provides a backpack full of hygiene supplies um, and some other items, water, pro protein bars, and so on and so forth. It's a very noteworthy cause that we're both involved in on yes. the board of. And if you are, if you work in the homeless um, support sector, if you're a case manager, a social worker who feels super passionate about the homeless and at risk youth, or uh, youth aging out of foster care, because we are gonna to start to really dive into that group as well. We need your help, we need you to volunteer for us. Um, we wanna be able to connect these people to resources, and we need that beautiful case manager, social worker brain of yours to um, come and really volunteer your time and help impact people. And we'll we can help your uh, organization yeah. as well um, we've, we're looking for more organizations to partner with but really it's to they're the invisible population that needs us the most so this is really giving a voice to the people who have none um, and so if that is important to you which are really no matter where you live in Broward County it should be a important issue to you then please go to the Backpack Barber Foundation reach out to Greg reach out to Evan or myself and see how you can help and you, you can, yeah, if it's, uh, you know, donating supplies or connecting us with the mm -hmm. organization, Greg uh, donates his time Wednesday mornings to cut uh, mm -hmm. the individuals that participate in something called Community Court, which takes place outside of City Hall in downtown Fort Lauderdale. And, you know, as Vanessa mentioned, they are the, you know, invisible population, uh, but they're parts of our community and, yeah. you know, people fall on hard times and one thing leads to another and then you end up being homeless and Greg's giving them a big boost by helping them get back on their feet, by helping them improve their appearance, restore their confidence, um, having that conversation with them. If we're able to point them in the right direction, if they do want the help, we do try to connect them with resources like for our partnership mm -hmm. or so many other resources out there. Um, and this is, if you're not aware, one of the most pertinent, critical issues mm -hmm. facing Broward County right now, 
um, is the homeless issue. Um, and if you don't think it affects you or your business, I know firsthand, unfortunately, that there's businesses that either have not decided to relocate their headquarters to downtown Fort Lauderdale because of this issue. And then I know businesses that have left downtown Fort Lauderdale because of this issue, because they don't feel that their employees can uh, walk the streets of downtown Fort Lauderdale because they didn't want to. Yeah. So it really does impact on, on many also different levels. a human rights movement. Yes. You know, there's women on the streets who, whether they have children or not, are thinking, do I get feminine hygiene products or do I eat? Do I, you know, there's men who, yes, there are some people who unfortunately end up in the streets because of a disease, which is addiction, but there's also a huge mental health issue. And there's also affordable housing issue, which is prevalent in our society. And whether I live out West and people tend to think it's not a West problem, affordable housing is knocking on our door. Um, so, People are, there's some really good, good people who just ended in a bad way. I have a personal friend of mine who we used to bartend together and was a veteran and because of PTSD and some health issues ended up on the streets. And if it wasn't for the VA and frankly myself and some of our other friends, he wouldn't be back on his feet. And th that's our homeless population. These aren't just people that you think are the waste of our society. These are real humans who deserve your eye contact, your time, and your resources. And uh, hopefully, if nothing else, maybe this inspired you to want to get involved in uh, a nonprofit charitable organization mm -hmm. that relates to your your life or, or something that you're involved in or something that your business can assist with. And I'm going to try to find a nice way to say this. I don't think there's anybody that's less busy or committed than both of us, but we still mm -hmm. find the times yeah. to sit on multiple nonprofit boards and volunteer our times because it's the right thing to do and because we want to make an impact in our community. With full-time jobs, family, I have a young child, you can't complain about the problem if you're not a part of the solution. And so... I do it because it's in my heart. I was led by two servant leaders, my parents, and I was lucky. And in this day and age, if we do not do the right work in our community, we are doing a disservice to our kids. And I can just say there's a lot of us here who I may not know through six degrees or through I know personally, I know that you could be doing more and I would push you even if you give an hour of your time or $10 you would not believe where that could go. Um, there's over 12,000 nonprofits in Broward County alone. Uh, if you need help in finding one, reach out to yes. me. Vanessa at Gildas Club, South Florida.org, and I will help you find the organization because there are plenty that need just even, just even a cheerleader who said that you can do it. So please find a nonprofit, plug into it, and help better 954. Yeah, and uh, I guess the last thing it, in closing, and you touched on it, that the nonprofits and these altruistic volunteers mm -hmm. really do help make community. Yeah. Gilda's Club has a sense of place and yeah. creates a sense of community. And they have amazing supporters. Yeah. These are people that have come from very well to do to next to nothing. And that's the beauty of Gilda's Club and the beauty of the nonprofit sector is we all just want to come together no matter our background, no matter our socioeconomic status, and we just want to make a better community. And one other last thing in closing, <laughs> um, it doesn't always have to be necessarily a 501c3 nonprofit organization for you to help and volunteer and donate your time. Mm -hmm. uh, our initiatives, are, are not 51c3s and frankly to be honest with you we really haven't had funds to go through the process and maybe some of our initiatives like choose 954 doesn't really stand to benefit as a nonprofit it's a media marketing platform but we've created it very altruistically to donate so much time and resources yeah. to our community <laughs> because it's the right thing to do so um, there are tons of nonprofits out there, but if it's something, if you can volunteer with kids sports, if that's yeah. what fine. Anything, yeah. really, really and truly anything will help better our community for tomorrow. All of us are connected to some child. There's some kid in our life 
that we want better tomorrow for, whether it's climate control or just fixing the potholes in the street or just, you know, a safer neighborhood. Our kids can't play in the parks anymore. We have to come together and make it better for them. So bring your kids, bring everybody, and just come out and serve and enjoy Fort Lauderdale. And go over the edge, huh? Yes, go over, go over the edge. Come and watch us go over the edge if you don't want to. And or give to our page. <laughs> and we hope we gave you a few more reasons to choose 954. Um, I'm Evan Snow at Evan Snow 13 on Instagram. Evan at choose954.com. If you want to email, I'm an open book, as you can see. Don't hesitate to reach out. You never know what answer you'll get in response. <laughs> um, and uh, we hope you all save the reefs, y'all. Have a good one. Bye.